If you've played Total War games for a while, you might have a strong opinion about the addition of hero characters to the battlefield. These legendary characters stand alone against hordes of enemies with boss tier health bars and special abilities that knock enemy soldiers around and sometimes feel like they make a big impact. These heroes are hyper balanced, not to be overpowered, so that the tactical gameplay is still the star of the show. But when one is making an indie auto battle a grand strategy game inspired by Total War, like I am, one need not balance out fun things like a powerful mage who can destroy armies with ease. In this video I'll be talking about how my game, Weights of War, was influenced by another indie auto battle or grand strategy game with overpowered heroes. Conquest of Elysium 5 is a game that doesn't get a lot of attention. It is ugly. It is hard to learn. It is unfair. The UI is terrible, but it's one of my all-time favorites. Last time, I talked about a main pillar of my game, keep fatigue low. I've never finished a Total War campaign because I get too tired of it, despite loving the games. It can take weeks or months to finish a campaign, whereas Conquest of Elysium can be finished in a few hours. A big reason for this is that battles can be finished in a few seconds while you watch the fight unfold. Obviously, this is a lot faster than the tactical micro-strategy required in a Total War battle. The other big reason is that the game doesn't punish you for picking fights and expanding like many modern strategy games do. The game wants you to create big doom-stacked armies and throw them recklessly at the enemy. You don't have to pay extra maintenance on the troops or lose income due to some administrative penalty or fail to expand due to climate-related reasons. These things make the grand strategy fun instead of tedious. It also makes it more grand strategy -y. You are making decisions about what to bring to a fight and who to fight and not having to get down on the ground with the troops and order every squad around. You also don't have to worry about the affordability of conquering a territory or whether your happiness will be too low when you do or any other mechanics that punish you for expanding. Another great bit of fun in the game is what I alluded to before, the heroes and the spellcasters. They are the centerpiece of the game. All of your decisions and resources are pointed towards making your big heroes bigger and better. It's like an arms race to weapons of mass destruction. The heroes, their spells, and the units they summon are more powerful than any army that can be bought with gold. As long as they have some troops on the front line to take damage while they work their spells. Consequently, you find yourself deeply invested in your starting character. Character advancement is a central pillar of the game. You're so invested that it walks the line between strategy and RPG. Each hero is dramatically different. They all have strengths and weaknesses that make each playthrough totally unique. Where the heroes in Total War are like the queen on a chessboard, in Conquest of Elysium, they are the whole game. As much as I love all of this, I think Conquest takes it too far. If your main character dies, it feels like there's no coming back. And during an auto battle, the AI can do phenomenally stupid things that turn your super powerful character into a doormat. And you can't help but get angry and frustrated watching the fun melt away while your character ruins all of your plans and dies meaninglessly. So for Weights of War, I want to strike a balance between the boring heroes of Total War and the all or nothing, hot and cold superheroes of Conquest of Elysium. The first thing I need to do is make some units that can cast spells. I started with something simple, a lightning bolt spell, and created a druid character who can cast it. I also introduced damage types into the game so that magic damage can bypass armor. I plan on also enhancing this spell's damage against armored units, since armor would conduct the electricity. The druid spells make a big difference in damage output for the red team, but he is still vulnerable, especially to enemy horse archers and other unit types that can flank the rear of the army. He will need a way to survive, so I created a stone skin spell he can cast on himself and other nearby units, giving them a substantial armor boost on top of whatever armor they might currently have. A single unit 
with two simple spells, will turn the tide of battle completely in Red's favor. You can see here, I also added a day-night cycle to give a sense of time scale for the battles and add some variety to the art. So the blue team will need some power of their own. I mentioned earlier magic bypasses armor, so a unit totally focused on offense might negate some of the extra armor the druid is giving the red team. I created mechanics for damage over time and area of effect spells, then I combined them together to make a classic firewall spell that will apply the fire damage over time to any enemy unit that walks in. As you can see, the Druid Stone Skin Armor Advantage is negated by the heavy incoming fire damage. Giving characters this much power opens up a lot of opportunity for interesting combinations and counterplay as the spell list grows. Thanks for watching. Next time, I'll talk more about the grand strategy game and how battles are fought over territory.